Hello and welcome to Lot 49. Today we will be looking at how Israel has fared over the last 11 months since the October 7th raid by Hamas and the resulting conflicts with its neighbours. We will look at its military casualties, the economic effects and the political effects for the country. So, according to the Israeli Defence Force website, from the beginning of the operation to destroy Hamas, up to the 12th of September, 346 soldiers have died, and 2,290 have been wounded. This figure covers the period of time in which Israel was in charge of how they responded to the events of October the 7th. However, as the website makes clear, this figure only includes those whose names are allowed to be published. Given that most countries will want to limit their public's knowledge of their losses, it can be assumed that even more have died. Now, according to an article written in August in the newspaper Anadolu Agency, referring to a Yediof Ahronov article that I could not find, over 10,000 Israeli soldiers have been killed or wounded since the outbreak of the conflict. They have said that around 1,000 soldiers are transferred every month to the Defence Ministry's Rehabilitation Department due to injuries sustained in the Gaza War. But because I can't find the original article, I don't know how accurate that information could be. So moving on, how much will the conflict cost the Israeli state economically? It has been estimated that the various conflicts it has engaged in will cost it $400 billion over the next 10 years through lost economic activity. 90% of this economic shock will come from indirect effects like reduced investment and labour market disruption. In the aftermath of the Aqsa flood, almost half a million of its 9.5 million population fled the country. Meanwhile, the number of work permits given to Palestinians has dropped from 100,000 to just 8,000, and 360,000 reservists have been mobilised for the Zionist war machine. Collectively, this has taken at least a tenth of the working population out of the economy. The risks posed by the conflict and the workforce reduction led to the economy shrinking by 20% in the final quarter of last year. However, after an 88.1% increase in government spending, mainly war spending, the economy grew by 14% in the first quarter of this year. Although that's still not enough to make up for the previous quarter's losses. To make matters worse, prior to the conflict, mass protests against Netanyahu's judicial reforms had already weakened the economy. And in the two decades before, Israel's economy had grown by credit consumption. According to an Israeli economist, Jacques Spendelach, in crisis situations many families can no longer repay their loans, leading to an increase in poverty in the country. Some pseudo-humanitarian organisations in the country are reporting that they have had to double their activities and now support nearly 200,000 families nationwide. As for the diplomatic damage done to Israel, on January 26, 2024, the ICJ ruled that Israel's actions in the Gaza Strip can be considered a genocide. And on the 13th of September, the ICJ also gave the advisory opinion that Israel's continued presence in the West Bank was unlawful, but it is obliged to stop its settlement activity in the West Bank and evacuate all settlers from it, and that it is obliged to pay reparations to the population of the occupied Palestinian territory. Furthermore, at least 11 countries have broken off diplomatic contact with Israel after its human rights abuses. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Sources can be found down in the description. This video was inspired by an interview with Colonel Jacques Bord on Dialogue Matters. If you're interested in any of the material, I think you should check it out. I have left a link to it down in the description along with the other sources used. As with all video channels, please feel free to like, 
share, comment and subscribe. And until next time, have a good day.